hello students welcome back to my channel in this video i am going to discuss in detail about the environmental chemistry the word environment is derived from the french word environner environner means surroundings so the study of human interactions with the natural surroundings is called environmental study environment is conveniently classified into four segments first one is atmosphere it is the air component again atmosphere is divided into four layers so from the earth surface the troposphere extends up to 11 kilometers so the four layers of atmosphere includes troposphere stratosphere mesosphere and ionosphere so the troposphere extends up to 11 kilometers from the surface of the earth coming to the second layer that is called as stratosphere and it extends up to 50 kilometers third layer is called as mesosphere it extends up to 85 kilometers fourth layer is called as ionosphere and it extends up to 500 kilometers so coming to the stratosphere the major element present in the stratosphere is ozone so the lower layer of the stratosphere is covered with ozone and it will act as a blanket and filters dangerous uv radiations so the main element present in the stratosphere is ozone coming to the second segment of the environment it is called as hydrosphere hydrosphere is the liquid component so hydrosphere is the liquid component of the environment especially 97% of the water is blocked in oceans and seas 2% of water is blocked in polar ice caps only 1% of the water is available as fresh water in rivers and lakes coming to the third segment of the environment it is called as lithosphere lithosphere is the soil and rocky material so the earth can be classified into three segments the inner one is called as core and that is covered with the mantle and the outer surface of the earth is called as the crust core is the gaseous component where 5000 degree centigrade will be maintained the second layer mantle is the liquid component and the top layer of the earth is called as the crust it is the solid component especially the top layer up to 6 inches the earth is loose so major agricultural activities takes place on the top layer of the crust and as we go down into the crust it becomes more hard and hard fourth segment of the environment is called as biosphere it generally includes a living organism and especially biosphere includes the study of ecosystems that means it includes the interactions of living organism with the remaining three segments of the environment especially atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere coming to the ecosystem ecosystem in general includes the relationship between the living organisms and non living organisms in a specified area best example for ecosystem is forest ecosystem pond ecosystem river ecosystem forest ecosystem desert ecosystem etc so ecosystem includes both living organism and non living organism so coming to the biotic components especially the living organism is called as 
biotic components and the non living organism is called as abiotic components so ecosystem mainly involves the interaction between biotic components and abiotic components biotic components means it includes living organism again for the convenience the living organism can be classified into three segments producers consumers decomposers producers means they produce food material coming to the consumers they will consume the food material and consumers includes deer lion dog etc coming to the decomposers they decompose the organic matter especially it includes bacteria fungi coming to the abiotic components it includes non living organism that means it includes both physical and chemical components coming to the physical components it includes rainfall temperature wind solar energy etc and coming to the chemical components it includes soil water etc so abiotic components means it includes the non living organism biotic component means it includes the living organism so living organism can be classified into three major groups especially producers consumers and decomposers so coming to the consumers again they can be classified into three categories primary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers so primary consumers especially includes herbivores that means simply we can call them as plant eaters so it includes elephant deer rabbit etc coming to the secondary consumers they can be called as omnivores they are both plant and meat eaters so they includes dog cat etc coming to the tertiary consumers they are called as high level consumers or in other words they can be called as carnivores so simply they can be called as meat eaters so they includes snakes lion tiger large fish etc that is about the detailed note on consumers and let us discuss in detail about the basic terms used in environmental chemistry the first term is pollution pollution means especially the presence of excessive concentration of unwanted substances which shows adverse effects on human beings plants animals and the other materials is called as the pollution so depending upon the area of the pollution pollution can be classified into air pollution water pollution soil pollution etc so let us know what is meant by pollutant pollutant means the substance is already present in the environment but it causes pollution when its concentration increases so that substance is called as the pollutant pollutant means that is already present in the environment but due to its increase in the concentration it causes pollution then the substance is called as the pollutant good examples for pollutant includes carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide etc so especially the air consists of 0.0034% of carbon dioxide so because of the industrialization if there is any increase in its concentration then it causes pollution then carbon dioxide will be called as a pollutant coming to the contaminant contaminant means the substance is not originally present in the atmosphere but suddenly it is released into the atmosphere because of the human activities and shows adverse effects then that is called as a contaminant and the best example for the contaminant includes mic mic means methyl isocyanate and its formula is ch3nco this mic gas is responsible for bhopal gas tragedy so which gas is responsible for bhopal gas tragedy that is mic mic means methyl isocyanate so along with mic radioactive rays if lead mercury or uranium are present in the environment they accounts for the contamination next term is receptor 
receptor means the part of the body which is affected by the pollutants so receptor means the part of the body that is affected by the pollutants for example if you consider smoke eyes are receptors for smoke similarly if you consider carbon monoxide hemoglobin is a receptor for the carbon monoxide next term is sink sink means the medium which interacts and retains the pollutant sink means the medium which is capable of interacting and retaining the pollutant best example is sea water it is the sink for carbon dioxide and if you consider dead body it is sink for microorganism next we will discuss about the particulates or aerosols particulates means the dispersion of small solid particles or liquid particles in the air that is called as particulates or aerosols so best example includes dust smoke fog so the dispersion of small solid or liquid particles in air is nothing but particulates or aerosols so best example sir dust smoke fog next we will discuss about the important terms like do cod bod tlv that is threshold limit value so coming to the do do means it is nothing but dissolved oxygen so dissolved oxygen means it is the amount of the oxygen present in the water in the dissolved state so the amount of oxygen present in water in the dissolved state is called as do and do is the parameter to measure the quality of the water in general ordinary water contains 4 to 6 mg per liter of the dissolved oxygen so if low levels of do are present then it indicates high levels of pollution so low do value indicates the high levels of pollution do is the important parameter to measure the quality of water next term is cod cod means chemical oxygen demand so in general along with the oxygen in water sometimes if it is polluted organic matter is also present in water then what happens so due to the presence of dissolved oxygen it undergoes chemical oxidation so the amount of the oxygen required for chemical oxidation of organic matter present in the polluted water is called as cod so pollution of the water is mainly due to the presence of organic matter so due to the presence of dissolved oxygen it oxidizes the organic matter so the amount of the oxygen that is required for the chemical oxidation of organic matter present in the polluted water is called as the cod especially the cod can be measured by using acidified potassium dichromate so let us see water contains methane and as we discussed earlier oxygen is also present in the dissolved state so due to the presence of organic matter and also oxygen is available this oxygen oxidizes the organic matter with the result what is happening oxygen is consumed so the amount of oxygen that is required to oxidize the organic matter in the polluted water is called as cod and this cod can be measured by using acidified potassium dichromate so acidified potassium dichromate means especially 50% sulfuric acid will be present so its formula is k2cr2o7 plus 50% h2so4 similarly we are having another term that is called as bod bod stands for biological oxygen demand so biological oxygen demand means similar to that of cod here the oxidation of the organic matter is possible because of the microorganism so it can be defined as the amount of oxygen required for biochemical oxidation of organic matter 
by microorganism like bacteria at 20 degree centigrade for about 5 days. So, BOD is the amount of oxygen required for biochemical oxidation of organic matter by microorganism at 20 degree centigrade for about 5 days. And finally, we will discuss about the TLV that is threshold limit value especially the growth of the city or town depends upon the industrialization. So due to industrialization what happens a healthy worker will expose for about 8 hours per day then what happens. So the minimum concentration of the pollutant which affects the healthy worker exposed to atmosphere for 8 hours per day is called as the threshold limit value. So whenever people are working in industries definitely they will be exposed to polluted environment. So there will be certain minimum concentration of the pollutant that affects the healthy worker. So one should be aware of the TLV values of different pollutants. For example, if we consider carbon monoxide, its threshold limit value is 9 ppm. So, if a healthy worker is exposed to 9 ppm of carbon monoxide, definitely he will be affected. Similarly, oxides of nitrogen TLV value is 10 ppm. Coming to the fluoride content in a drinking water, it is 3 ppm. And if at all, if its concentration is less than 1.5 ppm it will not affect any person but if it is 3 ppm definitely that person will be affected by the fluoride content in water. This is all about the basic terms used in environmental chemistry. If you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.